I want you to think for a moment about all those storage crops that keep for a very, very long time with a little bit of intervention. They maintain all of their nutrient density. Things like your root vegetables, things like winter squash. How about garlic and onions, grains, legumes, and one I've talked about millions of times practically are apples, one of my favorite. And particularly things like Arkansas black, which keep forever and a day and only get better with time. How about cabbages? How about tubers? Things like yams, cassava, so many other things out there that you could easily grow in your garden. But I don't think there's a whole lot of people putting a whole lot of focus in those things. And maybe you ought to, especially for all the people that have been reaching out saying, good night, man, what should I grow? How much should I grow? Look, my answer to all of that is it's up to you completely. I know that's not helpful, but consider perhaps those storage crops that are gonna be the ones that can maintain a lot of calories and really things that you can put away for a long, long, long time. Well, that brings us to what we're gonna do today. And right here behind me, you see one of the beds we have in here. We have one over here as well. Michelle has already gotten through with that one. But this one right here, you see a lot of stuff growing in there and there's a reason for it because I was in a rush once again and didn't do what I know to do, which is basically let my chickens go through it, get all those seeds out of there because you wind up with stuff like this. But it's not the end of the world because we are permaculture designers out here. So the problem is the solution. And we'll talk about that throughout this video as well. So what we got is over here in these buckets, we got a bunch of potatoes and they're like triple organic. First thing we got to do is go through and clear all these. But when you have very loose soil down there, it doesn't take much to get it up. So first things first, let's go ahead and handle that. So yeah, we got all this stuff growing up out of here, but think about it. Think of what I can do with this. I can sit here, take it, throw it outside the bed, pull up another one, get it out of here, throw it outside the bed. I could do all that, or I could do option B, which to me is the better option. We're in that area in that time of year where, well, we, we make compost essentially in one way or another all year long. So all of this green will be fantastic for the compost piles we've done. And we've talked a lot about that on Patreon. Because we've worked this soil over and it's very loose, it comes out easily. But here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna stuff this, every bit of that, down in this bucket. Oops, got a little bit of comfrey growing out of there. I'm gonna stuff it down as hard as I can in that bucket because my method of composting is essentially using buckets to gauge how much I need of everything. You don't need to know about that right now. Like I said, I cover a lot of it on Patreon where I can go into much greater detail. But instead of just throwing this stuff on the ground, which is perfectly fine if you want to do that, I'm going to collect it. So let's see how, my, how many buckets of green I can get for my future compost pile. There you have it. We got three buckets so far. Before it's all said and done for the compost I'm doing, I'll need about, I don't know, maybe 12 before it's all said and done, but this is a really good start. Here's another little trick. If you're gonna do it this way, make sure you put a lid on it and make sure it's tightly packed. I could use a little more in there and I'll get it after a while. Make sure it's tightly packed or this stuff will dry out. And you can only do this, I mean, you can't leave it in here indefinitely either. So you know what, it makes your job so much easier when you're doing what people think are mindless tasks. If you know that while I'm weeding, I'm taking those things and I'm gonna make something very, very, very productive out of it, which is gonna be some of that ball and compost that we've been producing. Now let's go to the next step. All right, now I'm just gonna loosen up the, the soil and there's comfrey in here. Um, so I'm just gonna take it out and add it to our buckets because it's, it'll be high nitrogen to help get that compost going. So now we're gonna dig a trench about six inches deep. So we're gonna do three of them on this, in this bed. And we're gonna put our potatoes about a foot apart. Now we're gonna cover up the potatoes and work on the next two trenches. I 
I can't stress the need to cover your soil. Nature does not like to be bare. If nature's bare, believe me, nature's gonna put something in its place that you're probably not gonna like, and it may happen anyway. But honestly, you're frying all of your beneficial soil microbes down in there. In fact, as we were tilling this, y'all, I can't even tell you how many worms pop, popped up out of there. And just as a little side note, during the winter, we gave the sheep access to these beds to not only eat a little bit of the stuff that was coming up in there, but also to put their droppings in the end of it. And y'all, I'm telling you what, we got soil right here that is to die for. So with all that said, all this straw that I had in here before, we're just gonna put it back over there. And I will say as a little note, we had that straw plumb up to here. That's how much of it is actually decomposed down into the soil. You've been chilling all day and now you had to come over here. He does this every single time we're filming. You gotta be a good puppy. You hear me? Don't lick me. <laughs> so what do we get out of the deal? We got a bunch of greens here that I'm gonna make compost out of it. You got some oregano that was growing in there. Michelle's gonna replant that somewhere else. And then we got a bunch of comfrey wow you could either cut these up propagate them all or we could replant them just like they are somewhere but folks i want to recapitulate here and kind of especially in these times point out the most critical parts of all the things we're growing right now think about those root crops the very ones i mentioned at the beginning they keep forever in a day you can eat them fresh you can put them away for a while you can come back to them later and there's so many things that keep for a very, very, very long time. Think about those apples that I talked about before. Think about those perennial things you can do. Think about the tubers you can get. So many good things out there. Check out the shirt I got. This is my son. Go check him out. He is doing some fantastic work over there. And it's going to blow your mind what he's doing from the ground up. All right, y'all. Like I said before, if you need any comfrey, need any bone sauce, world's best deer repellent. We make it all right here. It's not a panacea, but it's the best there is. You need rice knives or anything else we sell at the website, go check it out there. We also got some links for things down below that might be useful to you. Till next time, on behalf of Michelle and the greatest Pyrenees, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Ain't that right, Bwang? Don't lick me.